On this video, I finally fixed the tail light on my 2020 Jeep Gladiator by putting on a new bed. Okay, let's get to it. This is my new Evo 2 tray bed and canopy from Mitt's Alloy. I have been waiting for this thing for quite some time and I'm so excited that it is finally here and installed. Now it is built entirely out of aluminum, made in Australia, and has a length of 5 foot 8 inches. It is engineered to be the ultimate overland replacement bed for the Gladiator and I believe it is that and more. Now this is a pretty extensive upgrade with a lot of parts to talk about. You're essentially getting a tire carrier, roof rack, full storage system, high clearance bed, all in one. Now I am going to focus on the installation of the bed in this video and in my next video I will do a deep dive into all of the specs, the features, and what really makes this thing so unique. Okay, so quick backstory before we jump right into the bed upgrade. Now, if you're not familiar with the channel, you might not know that for the past two years, I've actually been slowly building my Jeep Gladiator. There was never really a goal. It wasn't like a SEMA build or, oh, I'm gonna do this crazy thing with it. I just really wanted to make it uh, work really well off-road and be practical enough to take my family on different adventures and really reliable. That was maybe the number one thing is I wanted to make sure that I had something that I could wheel uh, and not worry about break and so I, if I have my tiny humans with me I'm not just like stranded and super bummed uh, it's also worth noting that I'm based out of coastal North Carolina and we basically have the beach here and a few other places to wheel but I have to travel any place to do any like real offered adventure and so I needed to build something that I didn't have to tow that I could just go anywhere now in terms of where I've been with this Jeep, just in this past year of loan, I've driven it to Moab, Utah uh, for the Easter Jeep Safari. Had a blast with it there. This was the second time that Jeep's been to Moab. Um, I've taken it to Wind Rock, a really awesome spot to go off-roading uh, here. Taken it to the Nemo Tunnel, done um, your National Forest probably 15, 20 times. It's, it's one of my closer places to go wheel. And maybe it's biggest thing it's done this year is I did a 6,200 mile trip where I took it from Wilmington, North Carolina, all the way out to the Rubicon Trail and did the Rubicon. So there'll be a video recap on all that stuff coming. But just so you know, um, I really like to take this thing on different adventures. And that's why it has 40s on it. It's got a 40 by 1350 Nitto Trail Grappler. Um, it's got about three inches of lift from JK and JKS Manufacturing, and it's running a set of Dynatrack Pro Rock XD 60 axles. So those are the big core modifications that are done to it. Uh, I'll get into more about that later. So that kind of gives you the background on the vehicle. Now, how I ended up doing a bed upgrade really just comes into, I've had the Jeep, like I say, for a couple years now, and I've wheeled it an absolute ton. One of the challenges with a Gladiator is the fact that you hit the receiver a lot, and if you're not hitting the receiver, you're hitting the guards uh, on the back of the bed. If you're not hitting those and you're really unlucky, you're like me and you're popping the tail light out, which I've done on the passenger side at least 15 times. So the idea here for me is I wanted to do something that was going to upgrade the bed, I also wanted to do something that was going to uh, really make it more functional for when I wanted to take the family out and we had a ton of gear and the 40 and all that stuff because the 40 just took up so much room in the bed um, it really kind of killed the, the bed space so that's kind of how I started looking at different uh, mods now how I landed on a Mitz Alloy Evo 2 tray was really kind of a lucky uh, Instagram message from a buddy of mine that was working at Mule Expedition Outfitters. And he said, listen, this was about a year ago. He said, we're gonna start importing these Mitz Alloy beds. Are you like, you know, a fan of tray beds? And I'd already seen a few tray bed gladiators overseas that I was like, oh man, they look pretty cool. Didn't really know how to even go about ordering one if it was like I had to like reach out to like an Australian company and then I'd have to figure out like how to import it and all that stuff. So I'd kind of lost steam there. 
And he said, oh man, no, we, we do all the import for you. We, we can build it out however you want it. It's an all aluminum bed. Um, you, you know, they start with just the kind of tray in the back and then you can build it up with a box and all this stuff and change the inside. And so it, it took me a while to really start looking at the different configurations and trying to figure out, okay, how is this going to work with my 40s and non-stock with axles and all that stuff. Mine is the five foot eight version of it. So it's the same if you like had a Tacoma and wanted to put one on the back. So I ended up ordering it through Mule Expedition Outfitters and they are actually a West Coast based company. And what they did is sync me up with one of their East Coast distributors, which is Asheville Vehicle Outfitters. So essentially they imported the bed and then it went across the United States to Asheville, which is about five and a half hours from me here in Wilmington. Um, so it worked out really nicely. As soon as they got the bed in, I got a phone call from Eric at, at AVO and said, hey, your bed's here. Uh, let us know when you have time. We'll get you scheduled on the books to install it. And that was that. So uh, once I had my time set up, I took a trip up there. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, AVO, they specialize in Overland builds. They had a ton of gladiators there that were all getting outfitted with all sorts of stuff, alu cabs and, you know, full just over the top Overland builds. It was really cool to see that. I don't see that here as much here in Wilmington. So it was neat to kind of see all these different, you know, Tacoma builds and, you know, gladiator builds. So really like that. To get started, obviously my original bed needed to be removed. Now, there are only six bolts that actually secure the stock bed to the chassis. However, you can't break those free until you work on separating the fuel filler neck, the wiring harness, and remove the rear tail lights. If you have a Rubicon model, you will also need to pull the corner guards at the same time that you remove the stock rear bumper. One additional thing that we also pulled was my factory receiver hitch. This is not required and this bed will work with the factory receiver hitch. The reason I wanted to do it is because I knew that this new bed would offer me a higher departure angle and it would give me the ability to actually move up a receiver mount and my rear toe points with something custom and I will expand on this more in the next video. To secure the new bed in place, Mitz uses existing bed mounting holes and these location specific aluminum towers. Now you're going to bolt these in sort of loosely in place. Uh, they give you some adjustability so you can get it just right and then you're going to set the bed on the Jeep. Now it is worth noting that my new Mitz alloy bed as it's equipped is around 875 pounds. We used a forklift to get it to the two post lift. And then from there, we were able to set it on the new mounts. Once we were happy and made sure that it was even on both sides, uh, what you actually do now is drill out two mounting holes per feet. So each tower is going to get two basic through bolts that are going to secure the uh, bed to the mounting tower. The next item was to wire up the rear tail lights. Once each wire was isolated and signal tested, we used solder to merge the factory harness with the tail light bundle for mitts. After that, we used the provided camera housing to relocate the factory backup camera. This is something I would later change, but just so you know, you can bolt it right up. From there, we turned our attention to the under tray toolboxes. Now these bolt up on each side using spring tension T-nuts that secure the boxes underside. It's really nicely done how there are actually rails underneath the tray so you can mount different accessories and the fenders fairly easily. Now at this point, our plan was to install the provided fenders that Mitz Alloy made for my 40s. However, before doing so, we wanted to put the truck on weight so we could make sure that there weren't going to be any clearance issues. And we were very glad that we did that because what we found is the new weight of the bed simply overloaded the inch and a half JKS coils out back. Even just moving it around in the shop, I was rubbing on the bottom side of the bed. So I needed to do something fairly quickly. 
Thankfully, Avio actually had a set of three inch lift 440 to 660 rate Dobinson lift coils in stock. So I was able to swap out the JKS coils for these coils, which not only got the Jeep off of bump, but gave it a little bit more of an appropriate load carrying weight without having a super stiff coil. So at this point, I was wrapped up with AVO. It was the end of the day. They got the bed tray on and the Jeep was drivable. So glad they had those coil springs in stock. Now, I had a second appointment in the Asheville area with U-Joint Off-Road, and that's where I ended up finishing out some of the details on the bed that I already had planned ahead of time. Now I'm going to go and do everything that we did to wrap up this bed install with U-Joint in the second video. I'm also going to deep dive into everything that is unique about this canopy, how I had it configured and what I'm using it for. So please, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll get up to date on all the latest videos. Don't worry, it's going to be coming very soon. Now, if you have any questions, please be sure to drop them in the comments. If you want to know more about this MITS alloy tray, I will put a link in the description so you can get a full breakdown on how you can order one and how you can uh, outfit it. Uh, I'll also put the contact information for Asheville Vehicle Outfitters. So if you're on the East Coast like me, you can contact those guys and they can help you out. So that's what I got for now. I appreciate you guys watching and I hope to see you guys on the trail soon. Take care.